Back in 2002, an expedition through various coal mines in the Sede Home Formation of Columbia dug up hundreds upon hundreds of different thoracic vertebrae and ribs. And not only were many of them well preserved, each one was noted for being unusually large. However, the scientists that found them weren't exactly shocked or impressed, as the formation they were found in was well known for housing numerous reptilian giants, primarily kaiju like turtles and monstrous crocs in the Paleocene. And because of this, plus the fact that certain reptiles superficially have similar vertebrae, the team simply concluded that they had stumbled upon a new crocodilian. Pretty cool, but nothing to write home about. However, only a few years later, the fossils were transported to the Florida Museum of Natural History, where by chance, they were re-examined. And this re-examination led to a rather unexpected find, which was that this had been no giant croc, but rather a supersized snake. And when I say supersized, I mean supersized, as it belonged to an apparently titanic serpent, and thus they amply called this new snake the Titanoboa. And since its announcement to the world, the Titanoboa has become an icon in the world of paleontology, known by the masses and hailed as the largest, most powerful snake to have ever lived. And this boa was definitely a big one, as adults might have measured up to 12.8 meters or 42 feet in length, maybe even 14.3 meters or 47 feet, which, just to put that in perspective, is akin to the length of a fully grown sperm whale. So yeah, no thank you. And with these estimates, the Titanoboa easily dethroned the previous record holder, the Gigantophis garstini, a type of Matsoidae from Eocene Egypt. And I'm sure if I was to take to the streets and was to ask people what the biggest or scariest snake ever was, I'm confident that most, if not all, would claim Titanoboa, if they like paleontology that is, and they would do so with confidence and their chest puffed out. But here's the thing, the Matsoidae, who had just been usurped, was a family of snakes who were just as messed up as the boas, and throughout history, they cooked up some really messed up serpents besides just the Gigantophis. And recently, it was discovered this family created a species of their own, which was so monstrous that it may just have the Titanoboa beat. And yet, the public has barely ever heard of it. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Vasuki Indicus. This absolute unit of a serpent was only described just last year, in 2024. Yet, the holotype specimen has actually been unearthed since 2005, when in the Indian state of Gujarat, a collection of 27 pre-cloacal vertebrae were found, some of which were even arranged in their would-be life positions. Ironically though, a bit similar to the Titanoboa's case, the paleontologists who stumbled upon these bones believed they had found a new croc, not a snake, and thus the fossils didn't undergo any further review. Yet, unlike the Titanoboa, who was re-examined a few years later, this specimen had to be patient, as it wasn't until 19 years down the road that someone decided to take a second peek at the matter. And boy oh boy, were they in for a surprise, as with better technology and more attention, they realized, just like the Titanoboa, that this was no crocky, but rather part of a giant snake. And due to certain characteristics seen in the vertebrae, it was no doubt a type of Matsoidae, albeit a type never seen before, as it was far bigger than any known species, including the Gigantophis. Based on its post zygopophyseal width, the team reckoned that at the very least, this new serpent must have been between 10.9 to 12.2 meters, or 36 to 40 feet already putting it in the top 5 largest snakes of all time, and longer than any reptile today. However, based on its pre zygopophyseal width, it was even larger than this, with that bone yielding a length of 15.2 meters or 50 feet, giving it a strong edge over its largest relative, and even a slight edge over Titanoboa. And at this length, the Vasuki doesn't just become the new king of snakes, but also the longest non-dinosaur animal to have ever lived on land. And what do you call such an imposing beast? Well, if you've been paying attention, I've said it a few times, which is the Vasuki Indicus. And this might not seem to mean anything at first, but it really is a very fitting name, as Vasuki refers to the king of serpents in Hinduism, while Indicus references the fact that it was discovered in India. And so naturally, the discovery of a snake possibly bigger than Titanoboa created quite a bit of buzz. But there was, and still, is one looming question, which is that, while we have fair evidence that it was longer, we don't know for sure if Asuki was heavier or lighter than the Titanoboa, given that the latter possessed a more robust, wider skeleton. And as of now, the maximum weight given to Vasuki Indicus is about 1.1 tons, whereas the Titanoboa may have been slightly heavier, with its max estimates being about 1.25 tons. So, not a huge difference, but enough that you might start questioning if Asuki really outscares the previous ruler. And to that I say, ye must have little faith because I can almost guarantee that if you had to pick one of these guys to meet in person, the safer option would almost certainly be the Titanoboa. And the reason for this is that you have all been lied to. Titanoboa was no Titan Slayer. See what I did there? Now settle down everyone, before you guys pick up your pitchforks, let me explain. 
When it was first described and classified as a boid, paleontologists assumed that Titanoboa would have acted a lot like a modern anaconda, which eats just about everything they can manage to swallow, or sometimes can't. With the main difference being that Titanoboa is like an anaconda on megaroids, and thus would have been able to tackle giant crocs, turtles, and pretty much anything else that shared its environment. And for the most part, this early hypothesis has shaped how mainstream media has portrayed the Titanoboa, in other words, as a monstrous killer. However, in recent years, after more cranial material was recovered, scientists started to notice that its skull was quite unlike that of most boids, having an unusual palate, an abnormal number of teeth, as well as the teeth themselves being suspiciously curved and shaped like hooks. Fishing hooks, to be exact. And therefore, the idea started to creep in that Titanobo was all along just an oversized fisher, not a mammal killer, or reptile killer. And sure enough, what scientists also discovered was that these morphologies were not like those of its relatives, but rather like those of modern-day, say, amphidian snakes, specifically those who maintain a pasivorous diet. And if you need any more evidence, then take into consideration where the Titanoboa actually lived, which was warm regions where extensive rivers were found, along with a wide range of fish. And remains of the snake are often associated with various lungfish and osteoglossomorphs. So, in other words, it looks like the snake had a taste for sushi, not chicken, if you get my drift. Now, Vasuki Indicus, on the other hand, probably would have been much more interested in you than your pet goldfish, with its vertebrae suggesting it to have most likely been a terrestrial snake that preferred to spend its time on the ground than in the waters, or the trees for that matter too, with it being too heavy for the latter. Though I will say that in the case of swimming, it is believed to have been quite capable and was probably surprisingly good at it. So if giant crocs were enough to keep you out of the water, then the Vasuki will. This is besides the point though. The bigger thing here is that these vertebrae not only reflected primarily terrestrial locomotion, but that it was also a constrictor snake who lacked any specific adaptations that would suggest a specialization in fish, and thus it's presumed to have been more of a any kind of opportunity kind of guy, eating crocs, turtles, fish, other snakes, and get this, even primitive whales. So yeah, it definitely had quite the appetite. Here's the thing though, which actually to me makes the Vasuki even scarier. If you were sent back into its realm, you wouldn't find yourself running away or being chased by this creature as its hunkering size rendered it quite slow and immobile. So instead, you would have had to be on edge for every second you were there. Because to get around the speed issue, the Vasuki Indicus evolved to be an expert ambush hunter that likely utilized camouflage to stage strikes on unsuspecting prey, which it would then kill via constriction. Now I know what you're thinking. There ain't no way I'm missing a one-ton snake. And yes, its size would make it a bit easier to spot, but don't forget, snakes are really good at hiding. Like, really, really good. I mean, there's even the hypothesis that humans evolved a good eyesight because of them. So yeah, good luck. And let me tell you, if you're starting to think that messing with the Vasuki is a bad idea, then just wait to hear how it would eat you. Hint hint, it's not pretty. You may know this if you've seen one of my older videos, but the group it belonged to, the Matsoidae, were a fairly ancient family of snakes, which appeared about 28 million years before the Boats did, during the late Cretaceous. And because of this old age, they were quite primitive. And one way this showed was through the construction of their jaws, which unlike those of the boids, lacked an extra quadrate bone and elastic tendons, that in boids is what allows them to open their mouths to freakish angles. And so, without these adaptations, the Matsoidae, despite being constrictors, wouldn't have been able to swallow their prey whole. Sounds good at first, but uh, honestly, you'd prefer it if they gulped you down. Because instead of swallowing, they simply resolved to use their varanoid-like teeth to tear off chunks of flesh that were bite-sized to then swallow and getting fed on by one may have resembled what you see Komodo dragons do to deers or eels to their respective prey, which is, in other words, just straight up horrifying. Luckily for you though, if you did happen to get caught by Vasuki, you probably wouldn't need to worry about feeling its teeth tear at your flesh, for its constrictions killed prey at lightning speed, thanks to ridiculous forces. Let's take the anaconda for a second, an obviously feared predator who is scary enough to have gotten its own movie franchise, and can squeeze with 90 pounds per square inch. Very impressive. Yet, the Vasuki Indicus makes it look like a complete chump, having vertebrae that are up to six times wider than those of the anaconda. In other words, its squeezing was a tad bit tighter, and its strongest contractions possibly generated forces akin to that of a crocodile bite. Good luck surviving that! And besides the actual bone width, we do see that along the Vasuki skeleton, it possessed relatively high-sitting ribs, which helped form a stronger cylindrical trunk shape, as well as transversely wide vertebrae and broad hemal keel which is a fancy way for saying that it had a lot of large attachment areas where powerful muscles would have gone. And when you consider all of this together, you arrive at the harrowing conclusion that if this snake came back from the dead, many of us would be in trouble. This also doesn't even take into account that the Vasuki likely had great eyesight and a keen sense of smell, thanks to their forked tongues, which allowed them, and other snakes, to collect scent particles from the air. 
meaning that while animals had to be super vigilant just to spot it, it would know where you are no matter what. Suffice to say, this was one bad apple, in quite the package. Albeit, there is a drawback to its design, because it turns out that sustaining a giant serpent of its proportions takes a lot. It essentially requires a very specific kind of environment. And thus, the Vasuki Indicus was not a commonality during its existence, rather a rarity, with fossils only being known from India, and on top of that, just from one single location, the Naredi Formation of Gujarat. Now, during the Middle Eocene, India was much warmer than present and also more isolated, still being an island that was drifting upwards. And as a result of these two factors, you got a lot of unique environments and strange evolution, which obviously led to the Vasuki, who specifically inhabited mosaic habitats such as back swamp marshes. Here, there was an abundance of other life, which in many cases was also large as well, which provided the Vasuki with the needed resources to attain its size. And thus far, it's known to have lived alongside numerous walks of life, including catfish, turtles, crocodilians, as well as the early whales Andrusiphius and Cachacetus, who were in fact so early on in the evolutionary tree that they were probably not even fully aquatic yet. And thus, snakes hunting whales on land might have been a real possibility. Pretty trippy, huh? Along with the other known animals from this environment, paleontologists are also aware of a myriad of life that almost certainly encountered the Vasuki as well, given how close they were found near Naredi. And it seems like the entire region was chock full of primitive whales, namely Carodocetus, Indocetus, Bobiocetus, and Dadocetus, as well as the primitive Cyrenians, Protosiren, Eosiren, and Eotheroides. A couple of which, by the way, may have ventured onto land too, given the presence of limbs. So those poor sea cows, or land cows, or sea land cows, had to watch out as well. And there seems just to have been something in the area that really brought out the most in snakes, with Vasuki being by no means the sole serpent around, with a variety of pythons also being known of. And specifically, we think that the pythons which lived in this environment are actually the same ones that still live there today, a testament to just how effective and efficient snakes are. And if this area is starting to sound a little bit too snaky for you, then unfortunately, I've got some more bad news. Because like I said, India was essentially an island at the time, so if you wanted to leave it, you'd have had to venture out to sea in order to escape. But it turns out that escaping wasn't really an option either, as guess what? Snakes were there too, and giant ones at that, namely the Terrace Venus, a marine serpent with a powerful tail fluke and a large body that was up to 5.7 meters or 19 feet long. So sure, not outclassing the Vasuki, but uh, definitely big enough for me to immediately not like the thought of it. And that just drives home how crazy the Vasuki is. I mean, there's literally a giant snake swimming around in the waters, like Mario 64. And yet, it is not your biggest problem. And unfortunately for the life in India, the Vasuki would remain a major threat for a very long time. Because, while it did need perfect conditions in order to arise, it stuck like gum to asphalt once it appeared. And it would have been a large part of India's ecosystem for millions of years. I mean really, how are you going to get rid of a snake that's longer than a double-decker? Well, the answer to that my friends is good old mother nature the final boss for pretty much most species. As stated, one of the reasons why Vasuki evolved in the first place was thanks to a special wombo combo of conditions, including a bountiful ecosystem and the warm temperatures of the Eocene, which also had numerous events of intense heat spikes sprinkled throughout it. So, the snakes got lucky, while many other groups actually perished during these heat spells. But, as you can imagine, their luck eventually ran out. And as the Eocene progressed and the Legocene approached, the world resumed a cooling shift that had been generally a global trend for some time with worldwide carbon dioxide levels slowly lowering. And along with getting a bit chillier, the atmosphere started to get a wee bit drier as well. So here you have a giant snake that needs warmth and a wet swampy home, and now both of these factors were getting stripped away. Suffice to say, the clock was ticking for our boy. And lo and behold, before the Eocene had ended, about 33.9 million years ago, this serpent had disappeared from the fossil record, becoming just one more lost relic of time, and serving as a reminder that the planet is always changing. However, while the Vasuki Indicus might be gone for good, its legacy would live on for some time through its family, who did lose overall steam during the Eocene, but managed to persist in various places, including India. And their stories would continue all the way up to just 12,000 years ago, which was basically yesterday. And let me tell you, many of them, not just the Indicus, were uh, some bad cookies. So if you want to learn more about them, go check out an older video I made on them. Thanks for watching, and until next time on Extinct Zoo.